So like start player one, Al here. Um, we're about to uh, go over our Wii U review. Just wanted to mention a few things beforehand. One, um, Jason was supposed to be a part of the Wii U review. Unfortunately, he's been extraordinarily busy lately. He just started a new job um, and uh, we want to congratulate him on that and, and uh, we're happy to see that some things are happening for him and uh, hopefully we'll get him on uh, in the not too distant future. So there won't be a two player component to the review. We did want to do some of that, but didn't get an opportunity to. Also a couple quick mentions. Um, after kind of starting this review, I did get a couple of games that I didn't talk about in the review that uh, add some value for the system for me. I got uh, Lego City Undercover. Really enjoyed that game. Played all the way through the mission portion of it. Uh, and I'm uh, somewhere in the upper 60s on full completion and uh, still dig it out every once in a while and play it a little bit. A um, lot of fun, a lot of replay value in that the game has a lot to do if you want to complete the entire 100% complete all the side missions and everything. Uh, I don't know that I'll get an opportunity to do all that but I certainly have had fun occasionally picking it up and trying to complete some of that side stuff as well. Um, I also got the um, uh, beautiful 101 and uh, I haven't been able to get into it really yet. I played it for a little bit, a um, lot of dialogue, a lot of, lot of uh, uh, trying to get you there, um, some drawing on the tablet that doesn't really feel natural to me and uh, so I I'm not sure how I feel about it. I know a lot of people have said it's one of the, the best games for the system at this point. I just haven't been able to get into it and uh, maybe I will in the future uh, and we'll get a review out of it if I really get into it. That being said, I did want to touch on uh, one of the highlights for me of the Wii U system. You'll see that uh, as we go into the portion of the review with the video capture that most of what I have to say about the Wii U is relatively negative. Um, but I will say the Wii U Pro Controller uh, is definitely worth picking up if you're going to get into the Wii U system, if you're going to be playing the games. Um, this controller absolutely feels natural. It is easily a highlight of the system and um, hopefully if you get a chance to play on it you'll agree. It has a very uh, Xbox feel to the layout. Um, the sticks are very nicely placed um, and, and just generally very comfortable. Don't be fooled by imitations. Uh, I know that's kind of a cliche to say that, but don't be fooled by imitations. I was originally um, shopping for my controllers on Amazon and I found one that was listed as a Wii U Pro controller. And in fact, it was a third party controller that uh, if you see it, it looks very much like a super, it looks like there's a Super Nintendo controller imposed over the top of an Xbox controller. That controller, according to other people's reviews, when I got reading in a little bit more, is not, fully compatible with the Wii U Pro Controller. The button layout is a little bit different and can make it very difficult to play some games that were designed for the Pro Controller. So uh, buyer beware in that regard. Uh, while we're talking about controllers, of course, you're probably familiar with the standard Wiimote um, or the Wii Motion Plus controller. That really hasn't changed. If you're familiar with how to use those, that's the same thing from the Wii over. Um, that's kind of all I have on the controller side of things. Um, we'll go ahead and jump into the, the video play. And uh, like I said, I don't have two player um, or, or some of the functions. Uh, Jason and I did play around a little bit with the video chat feature. Um, but if you've used any video chat functions on smartphones, for instance, if you've used like the, um, not iMessage, but the the FaceTime. If you've used FaceTime, it FaceTime blows away what's on the Wii U. Uh, the video quality is really poor. The frame rates are really poor. It's laggy. Uh, it takes forever to connect. It takes forever to disconnect. And you can't do it on the fly. Unlike some things like you can go and use the browser on the fly from inside a game, if somebody sends you a chat request while you're playing a game and you decide to answer it, you actually have to either save or, or forcibly exit the game in order to go do that. Uh, so that's a huge detractor for that service as well. And I don't, I don't have any video of that in the uh, 
review. So without further ado, here's the review. Welcome to our Wii U. I'm sure you've seen the initial startup screen before. Now we're going to drop into the menu and you can see my me and then you'll see the flood of other me's from the Miiverse coming in. Uh, this is probably the first thing that I noticed that I really didn't care for much on the Wii U. Um, if I'd wanted my MySpace slash Twitter integration, um, I probably wouldn't be playing a console. That being said, the first thing we're going to go take a look at is Netflix. Netflix, along with YouTube and Amazon Prime, all suffer from performance issues. The first thing that I will say, feature-wise, Netflix is lacking the ability to automatically continue to the next episode in a series. That's one thing that I really enjoy about the feature set on the Xbox 360. Here in a second, I'm going to show you if you click on a television series rather than taking you to a sub screen where you can uh, episode selects it just automatically starts trying to play the video we jump off of here into YouTube now I edited out several minutes of just black screen on YouTube mainly because I went and did a search for my channel I tried to load our most recent video prior to this one it would not play I tried several times to load it actually and it wouldn't play. Then I did manage to get an uh, episode from NES Pursuit to load here. So I let it play for a few seconds. It seemed to be fine. I went back and what I ended up doing was loading a much older video from my channel and it seemed to load. Now this seems to be a pretty common problem on YouTube on Wii U that uh, it's hit or miss. You never know which which shows are going to load, which shows aren't going to load. It's almost like uh, they're on different servers or something, and uh, the Wii U just seems to fail when connecting to some content and doesn't when you go to other content. So we're going to go ahead and pop back to the main menu here in a second, and we'll fire up Super Mario 3D. Now, I'm sure as you've heard, there have been a lot of complaints from third-party developers that uh, the system is underpowered, it, it just doesn't perform as they thought it would. And then, you know, people make the argument, well, look at this, this is a first-party title and it's beautiful and it seems to play very well. You know, that's all fine and great, but let's face it, this is not the photorealistic type atmosphere that you see in your Call of Duties or your other war simulators that have become a staple of the gaming industry. Uh, whether you like those types of games or not, they definitely are a, a driving factor in the gaming industry. It, you're not even seeing really the Grand Theft Auto level of graphics for that matter. So it's it's really kind of disappointing while I really enjoy these types of games Mario 3d this game itself is pretty much the only reason I bought a Wii U uh, it's sad to see that this system is really not pushing the envelope beyond what we saw with the Wii other than it's now adding the resolution of 1080 and the additional pixels that you would see in a 1080 but not really the horsepower to take this to the next level or even compete with what is now the previous generation of systems since it's not, you know, it, it just really can't compete in power with systems like the PS4 or the Xbox One, let alone the PS3 or Xbox 360. It also, as a result, seems to be less feature uh, rich in things like Netflix for instance I'm not sure if that was developed by Netflix or if it was developed by Nintendo or, or in combination with each other but clearly not well driven 
I've seen a lot of performance lag issues in all of those applications. Netflix frequently buffers for me. At first I thought it might be a compatibility issue with my Wi-Fi network, strictly with this box. So I went ahead and got the wired adapter. I still have buffering issues in Netflix and I don't have those problems on the 360 or the PS3 or my... I bought my father-in-law a Roku box and he doesn't seem to have those kind of buffering issues on Netflix with the Roku box either. So wired wireless didn't seem to matter. That being said, I, I have less issues uh, with Amazon Prime Video, occasional buffer, but but very rarely. So that tells me that it's just strictly that the Netflix app isn't as well designed as it is on other platforms, and that's a shame. The next thing I'd like to talk about is Spot Pass and Meverse, and just the general noise that it creates. Um, I don't really appreciate it. We'll see when I uh, jump into some gameplay footage on Super Mario Wii U. If you turn on Spot Pass, it basically just looks like a whole bunch of, I don't know, MySpace or Twitter posts all over the screen. And, you know, while I, I commend them for trying to do a halfway decent job, there's not a whole lot of vulgarity in there. You, you know, you can only see Dear Bowser, you suck so many times before it gets old. So... Last thing I want to mention is the Wii U's browser function. I was very disappointed that they didn't implement the ability to do audio streaming. While some sites will support video clips and video streaming, you can't do any just plain audio streaming. This means that sites like Last.fm, Pandora, Spotify, or GrooveShark don't seem to work. In fact, I haven't been able to find a single audio streaming service that works with the Wii U. This is really disappointing and something I think they missed out on since they've made this wonderful media pad and they were touting the device as kind of a home media hub that they didn't leave any way for people to be able to play music through it. Select start and game on. So I hope you enjoyed our review of the Nintendo Wii U. Um, if there's specific games that you'd like to see us do reviews on, uh, we're starting to get used to using our capture equipment. So we, we have the ability to capture from some stuff. I've got some hardware mods that are going to be coming to the channel shortly. Uh, in fact, the next video I plan on putting out is a combination of showing off an AV mod I did to a top loader um, a while back, as well as a now HDMI mod built on top of that AV mod for the top load Super Nintendo, or uh, not Super Nintendo, the top load. NES, the NES model 101. So uh, then uh, the next planned mod after that is I plan on modding a SNES Junior, um, doing an RGB mod and then an RGB to HDMI um, conversion mod so that uh, the Super Nintendo has HDMI. And I kind of plan on doing a series of these. I know that uh, it's pretty commonplace now that the um, newer televisions are actually now coming without composite uh, so your only options are RF on the cable ready side or um, HDMI so these are kind of the only things that they, they have now so a lot of them are dropping component composite or RGB altogether so all your TV has it comes with like five HDMI's and cable ready uh, that being said for us that are retro gamers that still want to use our newer equipment with our, our older equipment your options are, you know, buy a bunch of adapters and have them sitting out and it gets really messy because you've got one set of AV cables coming from the system to an adapter that then converts it to HDMI and etc. And so I'm doing some mods that are, that are seeking to simplify some of that, uh, whether it be just skimming down that hardware and finding ways to fit it inside of the existing systems. Uh, hopefully doing it in a nice clean neat way with the top load Nintendo I did uh, when I get that video out you'll see that it it literally is just an HDMI connection on the back of it so it doesn't seem any different than a modern uh, modern console would have where you've just got an HDMI connector and that's my intention for the uh, SNES Junior and uh, my understanding is the SNES Junior has one of the cleanest video signals 
So hopefully this uh, video signal from the SNES Junior in RGB then uh, amplified with a small um, surface mount RGB amplifier uh, and a little mini board project. It'll be a kind of fun little build because we'll build the amplifier first and then I'm going to take in and skim down a RGB to HDMI adapter, uh, take off some of the uh, ports and stuff off the board and uh, source power from inside the system. So those are uh, some of the upcoming projects. If you like what we're doing, uh, if you want to continue to see us do more, it really helps motivate us when we see new subscribers. Uh, we love the comments um, when we're getting them, so definitely like, subscribe, comment down below, tell us some of the things you want to see us do. There's a lot of potential here, but uh, we want to do what you guys want to see. So select start and game on.